Good morning from Munich, from ESOC 2023. My name is Jens Fiele. I'm from Hamburg University Hospital, Department of Neuroradiology, and I'm the host of this um, discussion that we are going to have. And it's, it's a great pleasure to welcome Professor Mühlenbruch from Heidelberg University Hospital. And uh, there is reason to celebrate here because we have the 10th anniversary of the SOFIA usage in acute stroke treatment. Um, I, I remember still in 2013, we, we lived in a completely different world with all those negative trials and then SOFIA emerged. So what was your first experience? Thank you, Jens, for the kind introduction. So in uh, 2013, at that time, we uh, usually used the stent retriever as our first line approach uh, for mechanical thrombectomy. But still at that time, we used an intermediate catheter. And um, the SOFIA was introduced in 2013, as you mentioned before. And we immediately realized that um, the SOFIA catheter is a catheter which is very easy in use. So therefore, first we uh, started to combine the SOFIA catheter with our stent retriever um, approach. And uh, we collected data from different hospitals together and we combined this data with uh, our data. And one year later, we published the first uh, multi-center case experience with the SOFIA catheter in combination with the stent retriever. And we realized that this catheter is easy in use and can be combined with a stent retriever in order to get very successful re recanalization rates. And this is what you see here on this slide, that at that time we were able uh, to uh, um, get uh, Tiki 2B or 3, the so-called successful recanalization in more than 87% uh, of the cases. Yeah, and this, this was, I, I still remember when you presented the results for the first time, I think it was at Link. Yeah. And, and uh, I was really uh, impressed what has changed since then, if you look for the coming 10 years. So this was the starting point. This was, that was the starting point, correct. But at uh, mm -hmm. um, um, that time, right, when we start with the use of SOFIA, we realized that the SOFIA can also be used as a standalone system for mm -hmm. um, first line aspiration. So immediately, um, and this was idea from Thomas Liebig as well, so we combined our data from Heidelberg and at that time uh, from uh, Munich. And uh, we uh, realized that the SOFIA can be used as an aspiration catheter. And uh, the first one was the SOFIA 5 French, as you can see here. And uh, we obtained a TIKI 3 result in 60% in of the cases, which was really good. So, and that was the starting point when we decided to use the SOFIA catheter as a standalone system for aspiration. But it, it was originally not designed as an aspiration catheter. Correct. It was an intermediate catheter and yeah. at that time it was only available um, as a five French system. Mm. But then the company realized uh, the potential of, the cath uh, of this catheter platform and in a ver very short period of time uh, they um, introduced the SOFIA 6 French uh, mm -hmm. into the market. And again, we did the same what we uh, did before. We collected data from uh, a couple of centers. It's uh, mm -hmm. still a retrospective, but uh, 85 um, patients. And um, you see here that uh, combined Tiki 2C and 3, so mm -hmm. now it's uh, more focused on the higher recanalization rate, uh, was still very good, so more than 60%. Mm. Um, and in only one third of the cases, a stent retriever uh, was used. Yeah, and if, if you look at the SOFIA as, as a tool, um, so you, you used it personally, and how do you feel about the SOFIA as a catheter for, for training younger, younger interventionists? Do, do, um, so are, are there yeah, issues? So that's, that's a good question because it's uh, all about the training. Uh, and um, if we talk about training, then we have to talk about the ease of use of the device. If the ease yeah. of use is um, good, or let's say if it's easy to use, then you will uh, receive a high rate of acceptance in your team. And um, 
it's all about the placement of the catheter. If you have a bulky catheter, which is difficult to place, then nobody uh, likes to use it. But if you have a catheter, which is easy uh, in the placement, let's say uh, at the level of M1, so then uh, you will have a high rate of acceptance. And that, that's, uh, I would say, um, yeah. very, very, uh, that's the case with the Sophia catheter, not in our center and all the, all the other centers as well. And, and how, how do you use it with this famous snaking without anything inside? Or? Basically what we use, we use the um, regular guide wire, but we keep the regular guide wire inside the um, Sophia 5 or 6 French catheter, just uh, <coughs> three, four centimeters below. Mm -hmm. It gives more stiffness to the system, but the tip is still very soft. And 038. Oh. Yes, correct. Okay. O 035 in our case. Mm -hmm. And then you can snake it up to the uh, um, mm. carotid T or M1. And this is also safe and effective in the hands of less trained people. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And this, you, you mentioned in the beginning, and this is the, this slide, that originally you used it together with a stent retriever. Yeah, what's, yeah, I, I assume there is something, some message you want to convey here. Yeah, of course, there are now um, two randomized controlled trials, the ASTA and the COMPASS. The ASTA failed, as you all uh, know, um, but if we look to the recognition um, scores at the end uh, of, of all procedures, then you see that there are no difference uh, between the aspiration cohort and the stent retriever um, group. And this is the same for the COMPASS mm. trial uh, too. But here, the primary endpoint was, was uh, different. Here, it was um, the outcome of the patient. That's not uh, uh, important now for this discussion. What I'd like to show is that uh, basically, if uh, aspiration works, then uh, you, it could be the case that this is a fast, very fast procedure. And, they were, and this uh, was possible to show in this uh, COMPASS trial. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the SOFIA catheter. I know that in this trial, uh, other catheters uh, were used, but um, mm -hmm. more or less, uh, it's the it's the same uh, with the uh, Sophia catheter family. And you see here um, also other data from um, US, for example. Here they looked uh, at more than 300 patients, and they observed uh, more or less the same results what we published uh, before. So here a Tiki 2C3 result in 50% after aspiration and the stent retriever use was very similar in 29% uh, of the cases. Mm. And your, your, your handling of the SOFIA and the, the overall procedure, uh, has it changed over the last 10 years? Um, basically, uh, nowadays what we do is if it's, it's more um, location dependent. So okay. if we have, let's say, um, occlusion which is more distally located, like in the M2, we uh, go more for a stent retriever approach. But if it's an uh, M1 um, occlusion, then uh, we go more for the aspiration uh, approach because there are many, many publications uh, saying that uh, the M1 is actually the best indication for mm -hmm. performing uh, first-line aspiration. And this is what we uh, figure out with the SOFIA approach as well. And, and why? Because it's simpler? Because it's cheaper? Or Basically, it's dependent, I think, uh, about the fact that you can easy reach the M1 mm -hmm. with a catheter and you don't have, uh, not in all cases, but, but in the majority of cases, you don't have a tight angulation. So mm -hmm. you need a good um, engagement of the catheter tip to the clot and then you are successful. If you are not uh, able to uh, get in good engagement because of a tight angulation, for mm -hmm. example, then you are not successful with your uh, with your um, aspiration. This could be also the case, for example, if we talk about um, carotid T occlusions. Mm. Okay, so, so for anterior circulation, you more or less always use the SOFIA? For, we use yeah. it always for as an intermediate catheter, and for M1, we use it as a mm. first-line aspiration um, approach. For mm. M2, for example, we use it together with a stent mm. retriever. Yeah. And, and more distal occlusions, do you try to place maybe a SOFIA 5 
as distal as it gets. Yeah. So that's that's possible, especially if we talk about occlusions located in the inferior trunk, because there usually you don't have a tight angulation. It's more the case if the occlusion is located in the superior yeah. trunk, and uh, usually the sub, uh, the inferior trunk is larger in diameter. So the, so you can try if it's a proximal M2, but if it's a distal M2, mm. then definitely we go more for the stand retriever approach. Yeah, so we, we, we were starting to use the Sophia 5 with balloon guide catheters as well. We will have a conversation later on in this uh, discussion on, on the Bobby. But what's what's your feeling about balloon guide catheters and Sophia? Yes. Let's, yeah, without Bobby, with whatever we had in the past. So basically, we try always to combine in the anterior circulation the use of Sophia with a balloon guide so catheter. So aspiration plus balloon guide. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So um, here you see meta-analysis um, mm. about the SOFIA catheter because of the lack of prospective studies at the moment uh, about the use of SOFIA. <laughs> then uh, usually what you can find on the literature are meta-analyses. And here you see um, yeah. the direct comparison between ADAPT techniques, so the uh, aspiration first-line approach versus the use of uh, mm. the combination of stent retriever and, um, as and SOFIA. Yeah. And basically what the data shows is that um, there is more or less an equivalence. Uh, yeah. So there is no difference in the first pass rate and the final TIKI score, or uh, that's also very important uh, in the complication uh, rate. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you, you mentioned it already and there is no escape now for me to ask. There are no good prospective studies, but there yes. is one. There is one. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not able to show you the data right now because we uh, we finished uh, the data analysis just a couple of weeks um, before the meeting. So this is the SESAMI trial. This is a trial which we mm. conducted in Europe um, yeah. in more than 10 centers. We collected data from uh, almost 250 uh, patients um, about the yeah. use of SOFIA 6 and 5 French for our first line aspiration approach. And so far, what I can tell you, mm. um, the data uh, confirms what we have seen from yeah. the retrospective multicenter yeah. experience. Yeah. yeah, finally, we did the imaging collab for this Sesame study. So congratulations, because it's a completely different ball game to run a prospective tr study in, in many centers in Europe and a completely different data quality. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to, to hear about these data. Yeah, anything else? You want to, to mention about the Sophia? Maybe do you want something for future developments? Nicer color or something? <laughs> nicer color would be nice in order okay. to differentiate. No, but uh, I think there's definitely room for a four French mm. uh, system. I think for yes. us, it's more important uh, than an eight French system. Eight French, I think, is nice to have, mm. but it's not a must. So for me, definitely four French is... Uh, much more interesting because nowadays at least 20 or even more than 25 percent of the cases are occlusions distal to the M1. Yeah. Absolutely and yeah I, I hope we will get it. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty optimistic because this is obviously an interesting uh, new application and let's see what the studies are going to show. Yes thank you. Okay thank you Marcus it was always a pleasure and yeah glad to have you as the one of the yeah, pioneers of Sophia here and have your insight. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jens. Bye-bye. <laughs>